The setting? A convent. A nearby father named Hugo cradles his newly born child, and his wife Martina is uber thankful to a nun named Anne Marie for the gummy bears she managed to sneak in. Hugo leaves Diego the baby with his wife and goes for a drink of water. If only he knew what kind of story he was in, he'd tell Martina to deal with her dry throat instead of leaving her. The wife is, of course, killed when a mysterious being takes Diego. Big shouted no from the father, Hugo. He also never got out of the water she wanted. What a bad husband. Zed scribbles furiously, and John sees she's drawn in a banshee. He reassures her they're extinct, but this being a supernatural show, you know that's going to prove incorrect. A woman in a nightgown suddenly appears inside the mill, and John identifies her as Anne Marie, yet another of the Newcastle gang. Anne Marie insists she needs John's assistance in locating the stolen baby. Zed's all set to go to Mexico, and given she speaks Spanish, she'd be an asset, but John thinks she still needs to relax some. John Warren said the mill should keep her safe so long as she doesn't leave it. Let's all commit that to memory, shall we? Because that's not going to, that's for sure. Chaz is John's companion this time around, and both are surprised to find the address Anne Marie gave them leads to a convent, and doubly shocked to find Anne Marie is a nun. She isn't too happy to see John, but despite that, she still needs his help. To the ruins, says John, in an effort to narrow down which creature snatched the child. He flirts with a nun first, though, because he's just awesome that way. His ritual is a bust, so he's off to consult the baby's buried placenta instead with Anne Marie. Strange tradition. The ride over is awkward, as Anne Marie admits she doesn't trust John because he slept with her way back when, and then promptly slept with other women right after. His ego doesn't help matters as well. It's pretty much a no-win situation for John. In a bizarre visual, the tree above the buried placenta has grown human fruit that bleeds when stabbed. Weird, but it confirms baby Diego is still alive. Not sure how, but yeah, whatever works. Liquor and smokes for everyone! Okay, just smokes for John then. Everybody else, drink up! And Marie's drinking water? Fine. Get Hugo drunk then. John reveals that the creature responsible for Diego's abduction is one of Eve's sisters, who turned down Adam's proposal. Were Adam and Eve married in the Bible? I don't remember. Anyway, Hugo the cop slash father gets another call, finding out another baby's been taken. Zed has left the mill and meets Eddie the model for a drink. The vision of a vault behind Eddie tips her off that something is off about him, and she invites him back to the mill. Why she doesn't just leave then and there, I'll never understand. Monteo, a teenager and Hugo's son, is revealed to be the father of the stolen baby, and John, in an impressive bit of body language interpretation, connects the dots. Who needs to learn Spanish when you can do that? Something is after Hugo's family tree. John wants to do a spell to see the goddess's face, and in a fountain, armed with his homemade purification bowl, John ferrets out Sister Eve's name. Lamashtu. Looking like a rat from hell, which is oddly apt, I guess, John stabs Lamashtu, Eve's younger sister, after she tries to drown him. Not very nice, but you know, monster. Lamashtu usually eats babies, but this time she's only kidnapping them, which is strange. A lot of bizarre happenings in this episode. John and gang talk to Mia, Hugo's grandmother, and she reveals that La Brujeria are responsible. Powerful warlocks that John is sure are extinct, just like the Mbanshi. He really should reconfirm this stuff before refusing to consider it. He's scared La Brujeria might be behind the rising darkness. Anne-Marie inadvertently gives him an idea, and he fills a chicken with Hugo's blood to lure Lamash to, to them. I'm sure the chicken is glad to know his sacrifice wasn't in vain. What chicken doesn't want to be cuddled by a biblical monster? In the mill, Zed confronts Eddie and finds out he's not alone. Anne-Marie agrees to make the handoff to Lamashtu and reveals she feels guilty not only for Astra, but for leading John astray when he was younger. John gives her an amulet of Pazuzu, which is supposed to repel Lamashtu, and gets a few kisses for his trouble, getting action from a nun. I knew John had it in him. Lamashtu takes the bloody chicken bait, and John, Chaz, and Anne-Marie pursue her. Zed tries to run through the crusade buddies back in the mill, but despite all her effort, she's outnumbered and is overpowered. Rather retarded to think she could win in the first place. Don't leave the mill when people tell you not to! Ugh! John and team divide and conquer in the sewers, and John and Anne Marie quickly find the snatched babies. Probably hundreds of miles of sewers, but fine. The faster they retrieve the babies, the sooner they can deal with Lamashtu. John bluffs his way to the truth and finds out Lamashtu is working for La Brujeria because they promised her a part 
of the domain on Earth. John summons Pazuzu, and he takes out Lamashta, still the ever-angry boyfriend. Harsh. John thinks they're in the clear until Nambanshi appears, crawling eerily over the sewer tunnels and headed straight for John and Anne Marie, who is still laden with a baby. Jazz has already made his mistake. Damn, just when an immortal guy would be handy. Anne Marie takes matters into her own hands and shoots John. Bitch. Leaving him at the mercy of the Ivanshi as he bleeds out of his stomach. The first two part of the series, this episode leads into a bigger story than we've seen so far. Anne Marie is introduced and is looking quite different. In the comic, she's significantly older than John, and though she has a huge crush on him, he never sleeps with her. I suppose you could say he leads her on. I'm not sure how bad Anne Marie had it in the TV show during Newcastle. Where's the flashback episode already? But if it's anything like in the comic, there's a reason she ran to a nunnery. I find I like most of the changes done to Anne Marie here. Make her younger helps her relate to John better, and she comes across as a strong female character who has no qualms about making herself heard. Much to John's annoyance. The only thing I don't like is having her be the one who introduced John to magic. One can argue John got himself into magic as far as the comics are concerned. So having someone else take him by the hand and show him the ropes feels a bit like a disservice to John's character. He's very much a lone operator, learning things on the fly, and his knowledge of magic comes from self-study more than anything else. I haven't read a lot of the Swamp Thing comics, so I'm a tad unfamiliar with the La Brujeria and Ivanchi references, but it's explained well, and I didn't have a hard time following it. Another example of good writing. Five out of five, and I anxiously await the second part to see how exactly John gets out of confronting certain death.